dumb faces. Of <laughs> we are back with another ATD Raj video. Uh, we've got Joey here, my lovely, well, my assistant today. Yeah, assistant today. That was a terrible intro. Anyway, we are uh, going to be installing, showing you guys how to install uh, some Willwood disc brakes for a uh, Chevy Impala or a Corvette, it says in the documentation here too. Allegedly. Allegedly. So if you haven't been following along, check out the playlist in the description. Uh, I've been doing a frame off. Just got the rear suspension rebuilt. I rebuilt, I mean, new bushings. Um, this is rebuilt though. We got brand new control arms, ball joints, lowers, um, all the cool things. And now to top it all off, we have a uh, Willwood disc brake kit. These aren't open. Nope, not open. We've been waiting for the unboxing, definitely. Um, so I'm just gonna go through here, show you guys how to put these on. There's not too many of those videos out there. Um, and uh, yeah, by no means we're not professionals. We're just gonna kind of figure it out and read what the instructions tell us. So just take this kind of as a rough, guide of what we did and then make sure you read yours this is talking about shims and i know i ain't got shims so pay attention on yours so we're just gonna see what happens basically so this is not financial advice no it's not financial advice we're not financial advisors we are just <laughs> car people let's uh, get you guys set up and let's see what kind of shiny things we have here as you can tell they're brembos here is the uh part number for the kit, if you guys are going to be following along. Not that you can read it very well, um, but I guess there's that one there, and then there's this one too, where it says uh, front ball uh, 69 through 70 discs, uh, Corvette 64 through 82, I think that says. Um, so if you got a Corvette, this will supposedly work for you as well. So factory spindles. I got race spindles on that thing. We open her up here. We got the destructions, everything. Here we go, 69 through 82 Corvette. And you can do this for the drum or just spindles on the Impala and I guess Corvette. Just... They just be how they are. They just be. Um, yeah, so these are cool. We'll put these so they don't fly away. And we've got here. These are pads. They're cool. They're, they're chunky, boys, and they're quite chunky and dusty. So, there's that. Put these, let's lay them out sensibly. So we've got some hardware. I was just reading through the instructions. A lot of these on here say a number, like in the instructions, they'll say four. So I think you'll go to the instructions. We'll, we'll figure it out. We got some bolts. They they hold things. And I guess let's do this one next. I think these are all just this is a box full of hardware. That's really all this is. These are uh, just for the rotors. We'll add that to there. Got some more spacers and fun cool bolts. Put those there. Some more Torx bolts, regular bolts, wheel bearings. This is cool. You don't gotta go get new wheel bearings. It comes with wheel bearings and everything. Uh, the front and rear, or whatever the inner and outer, I guess is what you would call it. Is the correct term? So we got a bunch of those. Some gyms or washers or something. Yep, washers and spindle seals. You don't, need, you don't need seals either. Is what I told them. That's why it was a thousand dollars. So we are done with that box. So we'll set it next to it. Uh, do we do? What do we do next? Shiny or keep doing all the, the pack packages? Do the packages. Packages. Okay. We got here are the brackets that. Uh, you know, this was already opened. People open these already. Must have been in the factory they yeah. opened them. Um, did notice it already has some scratches on it. These actually went out for me. It already came with scratches on it. I'm not obviously reading it, but. 
they look nice. Right there. They look real nice. And then we got, I don't really know what to call these. These are the rotor adapter. Apparently what it says. Oh, these just mount to the rotor, yep. and that's what mounts it to the bracket. Also, CNC aluminum. Probably that is. Two of these, and let's do these guys. This is the this is the pretty stuff. So this right here in the sun, so we get full effect. Ta -da! Mega beautiful calipers themselves. So many pistons we got. Quite a few. <laughs> Three, six, six piston. Definitely a bit overkill, but you know what? <laughs> You'll stop right now <laughs> if you need to. Yeah. Look at these. Move your thumb, dude. Oh, it has six. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's six, not four, three. <laughs> so, uh, yep, these are cool. These beautiful guys. Work of art. See stuff back here with the machine, just like that. Just like that. These, these are nice. They twist off, and they have a little washer. So you don't have to worry about water getting back in there. You can check your uh, your bearing tension. Can't think of the correct word for that. A black little wood sticker. The one that came with the box on top was red. This is the big O L rotor on these. You're not drilled and slotted, which is fine. These are probably much more cheaper. I don't know why it's These so freaking things. It's so weird for me to see a rotor without Yeah, center <laughs> the center deal. But so good rotors you can see they are vented. You can see right through them. Definitely hefty. So on the whole feel. Whoa. Yeah. It's probably like 20 something pounds. Might be the same weight as my drum brakes after <laughs> these guys come on. <laughs> probably not saving too much weight, but who knows. So, that, other than the other rotor in there, is the contents of that box. I'm gonna get all this situated and keep stuff like that from happening. And uh, tell you what you guys need as far as tools and stuff. And uh, yeah, give us one second. All right, for this job today, you're going to need a 9 16 socket with a, that is a 12 point. You need a T45 Torx, a T60 Torx, a 5 16 Allen, standard 3 8 uh, what is it called? Ratchet. 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 You're going to need yourself a torque wrench and some good red locker red i always show you guys what you need um we can just open all these make sure all these fit obviously so we're gonna set up now bust out the destructions uh one thing you want to do make sure if you did paint your spindles like i did um as you can see there was a bit of paint that had come over i didn't tape it off good enough um so we had to go through and make sure this is all smooth again for your seals because you don't it'll just ruin your seals um, they usually, you can kind of see a wear mark in them where they've been riding for 50 years. There is a wear mark about halfway. You can, on the other side, you could feel it. But. Yeah. Um, so just make sure if you do have any paint on it or anything that it is past that kind of halfway mark. So everything on here should be good to go. Um, let's see, we did that for the other side. Um, other than that, you don't need any of your existing hardware comes with everything um, so you won't need this uh, don't need the one you painted black nope don't need the one i made all fancy all right so i went ahead just test fitted all this bracket uh that's just what number one is on your uh, instruction list whatever page that's on so when you put these on these come loose from the factory that's just so this can kind of shimmy around a little bit just because casting irregularities back in the day um it does say if you do have disc uh disc uh, spindles you need to install these um these spacers which would go right right there but since i have the drum spindles these are way longer 
and we don't need those. And it did also say uh, to initially put two shims um, right here. But as you can see, two shims don't even fit. Um, I'm thinking halfway because these are painted and it's already a lot thicker. As you can see, there is really, they just say, as long as everything's square and flush, you're good to go. It says add and subtract shims as needed. And I really, I mean, I can fit one in there, but by the time this gets torqued, pushed in, I'm thinking it's gonna be just fine. Um, so we are just going to leave that be. Uh, you start out with the bolts from this kit right here. Everything's in there. Um, that's that thing. That's that thing comes with these two bolts of the same length. Um, one thing to look out for is it's really tight on my steering right here on the control arm. You can see there, real tight. Um, so make sure to check that out. I, I'm pretty sure I was telling Joey that I think when the weight is on it, this is going to kind of move out of the way. Okay. And these bump stops are going to probably stop somewhere right up here by these bolts. So should be fine, but just something to look out for. Um, and then just uh, put the washers and nuts on. And should be good to go. If this will go. <laughs> we can't teach you how to thread a nut yeah. on. Can't teach you everything, but that one doesn't want to go on. Let me try this one. You know, I forgot the washer. I just want to see if the nuts will go on. That's nuts. That's, yeah, that is nuts. I don't know why this one. We use these different bolts. Is that why? I just happened to grab a different one. They look like the same exact thread count. Mm -hmm. One longer than the other one. Oh, yep. This guy out so here is saying they are the same size. I know. So there's two different sizes. That would make sense because this one, if you look, the actual steering shaft comes out further over here. The spindle steering knuckle thing. This is further out here than this one. So we'll put a shorter bolt here. Like I said, we're not professionals, but you did that. Do it. Do it with short on this side instead of us. Yes. Okay, so once you get the right bolt lengths to there, um, it should look something like that. Snug this guy up so it kind of grabs everything. And then go ahead, these are locking nuts, so they're going to be kind of tight going on, which I didn't realize until I read again. Um, so they are like the oval nuts, so they are going to be tight going on. Just keep going them. And tighten them to 65 foot-pounds, per the instructions. There we go. So now, take this big bolt. And you take your, uh, take your cherry flavor. Yep. Apply some cherry. Oh, oh. This is not what it now. That's that's not that's plenty. That's not what I wanted to do <laughs> at all. Then you torque that guy to 140 foot pounds. That's for real? Yep. We're gonna need the other torque. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Let's see what this one goes to. Ninety. Yeah. I'm gonna go grab the big torque wrench and I'll be right back. <laughs> so we got your local mega torque wrench. It's up to 140 foot pounds. And uh, you just give her. I need this to stop moving for a second. Do it a couple times. She's torqued. Once you get this bolt torqued and loft tighted, uh, take these bolts out back here. Make sure you do them one at a time so it keeps the uh, geometry. And you're gonna put, you can see where the threads were, where they were kind of dirty right there. Cause it's only like this, I'm gonna call it a washer nut. Uh, so put red thread Loctite, red Loctite on these and torque them to 40 foot pounds. So take this one out, put it in, torque it. Take this one out, Loctite it, put it in, torque it. Just do them one at a time. Uh, so I'm just gonna. Well, that's this one. There would normally be one there. Or, yep. Yes. And then that's the loose part of the bracket. Just gonna apply that much is really all you need. Ooh, 
That goes to 50 supposedly, so she might be torqued already. Just give it a couple bounces. She's good to go. So we're gonna do the same thing for this lower one and we'll bring you back for the next step. Okay, so once you get those torqued, next thing on the list to do is to put the studs in the hub. Uh, so one of these boxes with the hubs is gonna have these uh, wheel studs in them. See, they're kind of torqued in. Um, there's different bolt holes in here for the different wheel patterns that can be. Um, so apply them accordingly. Uh, okay, so we got the uh, wheel studs torqued. Uh, torqued these two 75 foot pounds. Um, all I did was uh, I had somebody help me and I just put a paper towel. You can see where I didn't do it and the vise kind of started biting it right there. Um, so I put a uh, microfiber towel and a shop towel and I just whatever I had laying around. Squeezed it in the vise kind of like right here with the stud and the stud being below the vise. And then uh, I was torquing it this way. They're facing this way and we just had somebody put a rod in here because it still wanted to pull out of the vise. So we just put some tension on these bolts, torqued them, rotated it again, torqued them. That's what these little marks are since I forgot which ones. Um, so that's that's how we did that. Um, kind of difficult, just make sure you don't chew it up with your vise. Use a towel or something like that or get some wood inserts on your vise, which I need to do. Um, so anyway, got these torqued. Um, next in the instructions, it wants to uh, grease the rear wheel bearing first for whatever reason um, But I don't really want to put a greasy wheel bearing in if we still got to mount the uh, hub adapter and to, rotor Yeah, hub adapter to the hub and then the rotor to this. Um, so what we're gonna do um, We're just gonna go ahead and do this whole thing first to get it ready And then we'll grease the bearings and put it all on when it's ready. That makes sense to me um, so for these you're gonna need the uh, 230 3829 kit. Um, it's just got the five bolts that you need. There's two of them for each wheel. Apply red Loctite to these guys. Uh, torque them to 25 foot pounds in a star pattern like you would to put on a normal wheel. So you would do this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. So do it in a star pattern so they go on evenly. Torque those 25 foot pounds. So how we kind of positioned it in the vise here is Gently, obviously, because we're doing aluminum and steel here. Um, those two studs are up against this wall, and just this one stud here, and it's, you can see, it's very tight. <laughs> um, so I'll lock tight these guys, um, and then once you get them all in, like I said, do the star pattern. And to 25 foot pounds, I believe is what that manual said. So you're using the proper T71 lock tape. 27140. Oh, she's got an extra 40 Loctites on her. Gal. Gal. 25 foot pounds, as we can see. And I said, do a star pattern. Oh, I'm gonna put it on on mode. It doesn't like to go on. Oh, that's it together a little bit more. I can't hold the end of it. I'm gonna throw off my torch spike. Okay, go to this guy, this guy, that one's just torque, and now if it's like a wheel, I usually like to go all the way back around again in a circle, just verify. Yep. Yep. Yep, I'm gonna move a little. And uh, we are done. Uh, slight correction. Uh, we got about double the torque we did. We read the, the instructions kind of have the same name. They get kind of confusing right there. These are 45. And then when you do the rotor, these boys, these boys to here, that's 25. So these are 45, that's 25. So it's already, it's been just a few minutes, so we should be good to just torque these down. Um, 
The Loctite hasn't set in yet. It's still moving. So. Just quick, quick change. Don't make that mistake. Read carefully. So these are the bolts to 230, 12, 120s. Uh, it says bolt adapter to rotor. They're little 516 guys. Thank you. Bro, I suck at Loctite. It is Loctiting. Attempting to, anyway. I'm the bolt supplier. I'll wipe this off with the greasiest towel I can find. Loctite's hard. Oh, f me. Loctite's hard to apply, guys. Should we trade? Want me to, want you to hold the bolts and I can Loctite? Since you're good at this. This is how you lock it. You take your bottle, just look at that. I think it would help if the hole wasn't so big, too. Nice. Hole's pretty good. Hey, just let me blame something else. Don't blame the hole, man. <laughs> so we're going to go through here, apply Loctite to all these guys, go all the way around, and we'll bring you back when it's torque time. All right, so these bolts here around the rotor are a... Uh, T40, so size smaller than the ones that these were. Didn't realize that. So we're just gonna go torque these. I don't like that this is spinning that, but I don't wanna throw the torque off. Look like at that, it's oozing out. That was one of the ones I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Beautiful. I'm gonna go around check all these again and uh, start greasing some bearings next. In today's episode of ATD does, we do wheel bearings. Okay. Yep, I'm right-handed. I am smarter with my right hand. So, best way that I've taught, uh, just get the grease right in your palm right here and hold the bearing like this Make more. and just take bites just like this and the grease and you'll see it start to smear up. But all you do is you just go around in a circle until it starts oozing out the top. And just use your hand to squeeze it and you see it starts coming out. It starts coming out the rollers right there. You can see if my hand's in the way. Take little bites and push pretty hard. Help to get it in your palm because your palm's squishy. And it'll start kind of oozing out the rollers there. So, pretty fun. Joy's doing the other one. We're gonna go through. This is my first time ever. Also, same. My my first time doing it correctly. So, you can see I kind of start oozing out there. I just go around, spin it, push. <laughs> see how it starts coming out of the rollers like that. So, once you get it all the way out, and it's oozing out on all sides, just do it a couple times just to make sure. Kind of roll the bearing, get the grease worked in there. And then, uh, really, do it till you're bored, or until you know you got it all the way through. I'm going to do it till I got it all the way through. All right, I've got the uh, spindle uh, nice and lubed up. Added some grease actually inside the actual hub. Uh, got the seal on, as you can see. All right. Just guide this on, make sure the seal goes on there nice and good like. And it did, nice. Now it should kind of hold it up there. I didn't have enough hands to go and grab the bearing, so I'm gonna go grab the front bearing and we'll get everything Front on. bearing on, not, not the wrong way, like half a stone. I'm actually gonna use that grease. Hold on. Show the orientation that is the right way. I'm gonna hang that right there for a second. <laughs> Get some grease. I didn't get any on the inner race at all. Hold on. Stay. All right, we're going for it. Screw it. Oh, pushed it. On. Orientate it this way so it sits in the race. Get around there. See it. Push it up. And then let's keep that nut at the ready. Grab the washer. Which is that clearance? Pocket. Is it quite clearancy? Moses. 
it's straight Jesus clearance. <laughs> Don't warp your rotors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah you'd, you'd be having a hell of a sound. Then this obviously goes on here to keep the thing snight. There's a little groove that it fits in. Take your glorified castle nut. Ideally, you'd clean it, but I didn't know where it went, but I left it in my hub. Yeah, so that's one thing. You're going to need your uh, your factory spindle nuts if you have any. Uh, didn't seem to have any in the kit. So keep that in mind or go grab some. Probably be better to just buy new ones. Yeah, probably be better. This one's kind of being sticky. I don't think I need this glove anymore. I can have my fingers back. And then what you want to do, you don't just want to tighten these down. you got to seat the bearings. So kind of spin it as you go and check for, you know, well, it helps if you have an actual car on it, but there's no movement side to side. It's not really tight yet. Um, so you just want to kind of tighten this nut it does go on the other side. until it kind of starts getting tough and then back it off a little, which mine isn't moving. Kind of yeah, it's losing its spin power. Yep, losing its spin power. And that's your preload. And then you want to back it off a tickle until basically it's like a cotter pin, like you're doing a ball joint. There's going to be a hole in here, and you're going to want a cotter key, a cotter pin rather, through that, and then wrap it around like a castle nut, like you would do on a ball joint, just like that. There's a non greasy version. Screw on this beauty, beauty thing. We load it with grease first, but just for video purposes, I'm going to put it on. And you got yourself a set of wheel wood brakes, but not yet. Forgot about the calipers. We're not done yet. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we got the caliper on. Uh, I just use these the actual hex head bolts in the kit. And I want you to shim it. You can kind of look down there. It's hard to see on camera because I can't focus all that at the same time, but you just want to shim it. We went so far as we got a uh, caliper. And you can buy them at Harbor Freight for pretty cheap, so yeah. it might be worth it to just get it right. Yeah, but yeah, you can do it if you're that kind of guy too. Just eyeball it. You can kind of look down on that gap right there and see the rotor even. Like I said, it's hard to see on camera. There it goes. Uh, but geez margin of error in there we can't add another shim or it's going to be too much we need like half a shim um, so if you want to get that crazy you could but it's not worth it so once you get everything situated here grab your rotor that goes to whatever size and you're going to be driving forward most of the time I think uh, so put this on whatever side faces forward as the arrow this and you got to put the pads on first before you put the caliper on don't ask me how we know that um so all you do is i got these nice little c-clips that you're going to lose on the side of the road if you ever have to take these apart um you grab your needle nose which are set those down for easy access put these down let me not do that because we'll scratch the paint <laughs> um and just pull these out that one wanted to leave I'll just put that there same thing with this one. It's a dangerous game, put, putting those on the ground. Yep, it might walk away from you. Pull these pins out. These grade eight pins. You can tell they are, by the way, that they're gold. Mm -hmm. Nope. Got pins out. Take these guys and just simply slide them in. Look at that, it even kind of holds it. It's precision machine work if I've ever seen them. This whole thing has been quite, oh, except for that one. <laughs> now, you your pins. Where the odds are all just lined up. Not very up. There's got to be a way to do these on the rotor, really. Hmm. Whatever. Whatever. I'm not an engineer. I just put together their things. That guy in there. I think we're in that case wants to go for damn it. Alright, you're getting the I'm in an emergency situation thing. I'm just gonna test this. 
Can you just push them into place? Yes. Okay. Good to know. Now, we we'll go ahead and get this guy lined up. Now what you're gonna wanna do is have your shims ready. That kit comes with some shims. Um, we already put this on, so we know that my car needs four shims um, for these bolts back here. The shims go right here uh, in between the caliper and the deal. So we'll stick these shims there, slide the bolt through, and uh, yeah. Here there's the old windless tires. Now, moment of truth, see if my 15 inch wheels. We took the air out so it'll be lighter. Yeah, that's how that works. Don't scratch anything now. Oh, she's gonna fit, boys. Look at that. That's on. Come on, have some nuts. Yes. A pocket full of nuts. I got tread pattern. Oh, yeah. That's Cooper Cobra legs. <laughs> Cooper Cobra legs. <laughs> Sounds like a fighter or something. I gotta get new wheels that show my disc brakes. Oh, you just gotta, you gotta, you gotta be a secret weapon, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Different stud. They might be a different pattern. I think they're not the same. <laughs> <laughs> Those are just the standard lugs. They're not reverse thread, are they? That's not going on. No? <laughs> well, I got a, a drawer full of lug nuts, so. We these, might... are, these are bigger. Really? The studs are bigger? I think so. Oh, yeah, because that wouldn't slide on there. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to go dig for some lug nuts, but it fits. That's a good thing with just enough clearance. Oh, uh, yeah. No, it's not bad, actually. The bottom of the caliper. I don't know if you can even see it through there <clears throat> on camera. It's pretty fucking close. Yeah. So just like don't lose your wheel while you're driving. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're gonna go look for lug nuts, I'll be right back. You have found the lug size with your tap and die set. Happened to have it. I just took a thread gauge and measured the threads and saw I had one in here. So the size of these these lugs, you're gonna need lug nuts, are half inch by twenty. Or half oh, inch with a twenty close. thread pitch. Yep. So that's what size lug nuts you need. Half inch by twenty. Yeah, you'll be good to go. But yeah, he has seven sixteenths wheel studs, so not gonna. Thank you guys for watching. That is how you install a Wheelwood disc brake kit for a '69 70 Impala. When was it? Like '68 something? It was yeah, '68 to '82. Yeah. So that's how you do that. Like I said. Um, just use this as a, hey, this is what you might have to do. And then uh, obviously follow your instructions. But pay attention to your shims. Big thing on those wheel things. We didn't end up needing any, which uh, is a little interesting. But just the way it goes sometimes. Other than that, like I said, just pay attention to yours. Add and remove as necessary, like it says in the manual. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. And uh, stay tuned for what we got next. Uh, check out more of the Impala, if not, if this is the latest video. Um, there'll be a playlist, um, check out future builds and previous builds for reference. That's where she stands now. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Click subscribe. See what we got working on in the future. Peace. Peace.